Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Ephesians 2:10 is a wonderful scripture. The amplified it's a little bit long, but it really makes a very good point. For we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do the good works which God predestined and planned ahead of time for us. So we are born again, recreated in Christ, that we might do good works, which he prepared ahead of time that we should walk in them and watch, watch the takeaway. Living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. So God equips me and enables me by giving me a new heart and a new spirit to want to do good things. Then as I do those good things, they automatically turn into this good life that God wants me to live. So it's really very simple. The more you obey God, the more specifically and radically that we obey God. Especially, I think, we need to practice in little things. Because one of the biggest mistakes that we make is we think the little stuff doesn't matter. But honestly, that's where we get our practice for the big things that only come along here and there in life. We need to practice obedience in little things. And I got a lot of stories about that, but I definitely can't get into telling you them. But that's why I talk about things like putting your grocery cart back where it belongs and, and not taking home office supplies that don't belong to you and, you know. Don't have time for that today. Set your mind to obey God. This morning, I set my mind to obey God. God, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. That's a very important part of what we call the Lord's Prayer. Your will be done in this hunk of earth. <laughs> Not just everybody else out there, but in this hunk of earth. Your will be done in me as it is in heaven. Here I am, God. I want to do your will today. Use me. Your plan, your will, your way. Setting our mind is extremely important. Matter of fact, I think it's good to even stay in bed for a few minutes after you wake up and just set your mind in the direction that you want to go in that day. And then pray about it. Lord, I, I want to really represent you today. I want to have a spirit-filled personality. I set my mind to obey you today. Setting your mind is the first thing you have to do to have good behavior. And you can set your mind about things that are even coming up way in the future. Hebrews 10, 5 through 7. Hence, when he, Christ, entered into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but instead you have made ready a body for me to offer. And can I just simply say to you that Every day we need to offer up our body as a living sacrifice to God. That's biblical, by the way. Offer up your body and all your faculties as a living sacrifice unto God, holy, devoted, and well-pleasing to God, which is a reasonable request, God says. I'm not asking too much. The Holy Spirit lives in us, and He wants to work through us. He wants to talk through you. He wants to touch through you. He wants to speak through you. He wants to comfort people through you. Yes, through you. Yes, through you. Through you. Not just a handful of people on the platform in your church. Through you, in your neighborhood, where you work, in your schools. Through you. God wants to work through you. Verse 7, then I said, behold, I love this, here I am coming to do your will, O God. 
to fulfill what is written of me in the volume of the book. I love that. My gosh. Just, just take a moment every morning, lift your hands to heaven and say, here I am, God. Here I am coming to do your will. Holy Spirit, help me. I can't do it without you. I can't do it without you, but, but my heart is to obey you. My heart is to do what you want me to do. You know, if you begin to do that every day, man, you're going to get a mindset. And then when temptation comes, which it will come, you're going to be able to say, no, I've already set my mind. I'm going to obey God. And then that will take you through loneliness. It will, it will take you through people judging you and criticizing you because you don't want to run with the crowd and do all the things that they want to do. Let me tell you something. We live in intense times where the temptation and the deception around us is absolutely unbelievable. Unbelievable. And we have to be full of God's power knowing the Word of God because we cannot know the will of God if we don't know the Word of God. We must know the Word of God. One of my favorite things to do is to get up here and hold this Bible up. I absolutely love it. I love to just hold it up here and just let all these people all over the world see that this is where it's at right here, the Word of God. Now the Bible says faith without works is dead. So if we have faith, then the natural result of faith is that we're going to want to do what God wants us to do. You know, David, the psalmist David who became King David, is a pretty amazing man. Actually, do you know that the Bible, there's only one person the Bible talks about more than David, and that's Jesus. And in Acts 13, 22, there's really an astounding scripture. It says, and when he had deposed him, he raised up David to be their king. And of him he bore witness and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart who will do all of my will and carry out my program fully. A man who will do all of my will and carry out my program fully. You know, some of us are willing to do the will of God until we get a little bit of judgment and criticism from our friends and we think maybe we're not going to be part of the group anymore and then we start backing off. You say, well, wait a minute. David didn't do the whole will of God. I mean, he got into an adulterous affair. He had a, a woman's husband killed. Yes, David did some terrible things. Things that someone who knew God like he did should have never done. And then he even covered it up for a year and wouldn't face it and got into a deeper level of deception. So how can God say, here's a man after my own heart who will do all of my will? Because of this, David had a heart that was passionate to do God's will. Even though he messed up and he failed on several occasions, his heart attitude was, I want your will. And that's what I'm trying to get across to you today. To be honest, this is really the major thing that I want to deposit with you today, is we have to start wanting God's will. Not just hoping that it falls on us or we happen to trip into it, but we want God's will. We pray for God's will, and we are willing to do God's will. And then when we fail, we get right back up and start again. I'll tell you another thing that made David a great man. You listen to me. Now, I want you to listen because somebody's going to get something from this. Here's one of the things that made David a great man, and even a man that God could say, this is a man after my own heart. He knew how to recover from failure. Well, a few of you are getting it, not all. Think about it. How hard would it be to recover if you did something like what David did? But he understood the power of forgiveness. He understood the power of cleansing. He understood the power of being renewed and restored by God. He understood that when God took care of it, it was taken care of, and he didn't have to keep wallowing in it and letting it ruin the rest of his life. I think it takes a great man or woman of God to be able to trust God enough to fully recover from sin. 
Amen? So you can wallow around in the flesh and just spend the rest of your life feeling guilty if you want to, but you don't have to. And if we really understand the character of God, we know that His mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. David is a man who will do my will and carry out my program fully, even though he fell in a ditch a few times. Come on. Ooh, I think this is so good. So good. Now, James 2, 17 and 18 talks about faith without works is dead. He said, James said, you cannot show me that you have real faith if you have no works are deeds of obedience to back it up. That's what works are, deeds of obedience. Works of the flesh is me working, hoping to get something from God. God doesn't want that. I don't go and do good, good works, so now God owes me something, or now I have favor with God. I get all that as a free gift. I do good works because of what God has done for me. We don't just work, we work the works of God. There's a difference in just getting into works and working the works of God. We want to do what God asks us to do. Amen? And he said, faith without works, deeds of obedience is dead. So let me just put this to you in very simple terms. Faith is just believing. It's it's believing what the Word says enough that we really, truly put our confidence in it and step out on it. If I really, really, really believe that I have been made right with God through the blood of Christ and that my sins can be forgiven and cleansed, if I really believe that, then I will not waste my, lo my life living under condemnation. Yeah. It's taken a while, but you're getting there. But see, we almost, we almost think it's our obligation to feel guilty. That's like a mother who thinks she's obligated to worry about her kids. You cannot find any place in the Bible where it asks you to feel guilty. And see, that, that seems like ludicrous, like, well, I don't know, Joyce, that just doesn't even sound right. You feel repentant. Repentance is one thing, guilt and condemnation is another. The Holy Ghost brings conviction, the devil brings condemnation. There's a huge difference. And when the Holy Spirit convicts us, we should rejoice. That is a great thing. If we really, really, really believe that harboring unforgiveness and bitterness and resentment poisons our life and that it grieves the Holy Spirit, then we won't do it. Hmm. Well, yeah, but Joyce, you don't know what they did to me. It doesn't matter what they did. And I don't mean that like your pain doesn't matter. What I'm saying is your only way out is God's plan. <laughs> There's no other method of recovery other than God's plan. We don't get the devil back by acting like the devil. <laughs> Come on now. But we overcome evil with good. It's one of the greatest secrets in the Word of God. One of the greatest secrets in the Word of God. Because nothing else works. God's way is the only way that works. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. You know, the life that God offers us in here is not just to breathe. It's life as God has it. The word Zoe, Zoe life, is life as God has it. Jesus said, I am the way, walk in this way. I am the truth, follow the truth, and I am the life that you're looking for.
the light. If you really believe, and I really believe, that keeping commitments is important, that keeping our word is important, that doing what we tell people we're going to do is important, then we'll do it. We'll swear to our own hurt and change not. That's what the Bible says. Swear to your own hurt and change not. In other words, if you give your word on something, even if it hurts you and is hard and it costs you to keep your word, you don't back down and you don't back out. And I'll tell you what, we live in a scary society today where keeping a commitment means nothing to the majority of people out there. I mean, absolutely nothing. Being obedient in little things. If we really believe how important these things are, when we really believe, then that turns into doing. And so I would just say, if you're having a hard time forgiving, then just go back to the Word and start studying everything the Word says about forgiveness and let the anointing that's on the Word increase your believing. And then when your believing is strong enough, it won't be hard to do it. Our believing dictates our living. When we believe right, we're going to live right. Are you with me? All right, now, let's go in just another little direction here for a minute. Why do people find it so difficult to believe? Well, I had a hard heart. People who have been abused usually end up with a hard heart. You get calluses in your personality and on your heart because you're just fed up with being hurt and pushed around and manipulated and used. A lot of um, rejection from people, people who won't accept you the way you are, who are always trying to make you something you're not, that can give you a hard heart. Come on now. A lot of disappointment with God can give you a hard heart. And you know, if we get disappointed with God, it's not God's fault. It's because our expectations were weird. Ooh, Jesus. Just, just being too involved in the world can give you a hard heart. You got to be careful about watching too much excessive violence. I mean, I love good mysteries, and but there's a lot of things that I have to turn off, look away from. You, 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 can't, you can't let your heart get hard. I know it's a dangerous thing to get a hard heart because we are to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And that's the title of my message today, being sensitive to the Holy Spirit. But see, when we have a hard heart, it's difficult for God to just barely touch us and us get it. Sometimes we have to just get in real trouble in our lives before we realize something must be wrong. <laughs> oh, Mabel, things aren't going right. What do you think is wrong? <laughs> You know, the Israelites murmured and complained and murmured and complained and God kept warning them and warning them and warning them and they murmured and complained and wouldn't shut up and wouldn't be thankful and wouldn't listen to God. And God got tired of it. And a plague got into the camp that they let in, by the way, and 23,000 of them fell dead in one day. And then they said, oh, we have sinned. Well, what a lovely revelation. 23,000 people didn't have to die for them to get that. What's going to have to happen in America before we get it that you're not going to get rid of God? Come on. What all is going to have to happen in our schools before we realize that you can't expel God from school? Come on, what all is going to have to happen before we say, oh, we need to return to God? But see, if we're sensitive to the Holy Spirit, come on now, it's so important to keep a tender heart toward God. If we're sensitive to the Holy Spirit, we get it right away. <laughs> it's like, oh, wait a minute, God doesn't like that. I'm going to back off from that. Then I don't have to go down the road of all these years of misery and messes in my life before I realize that God's not happy about what's going on. Come on, give God praise. A 
Let's look at Ezekiel 11, 19. Woohoo! I love it. And I will give them one heart, a new heart, and I will put a new spirit within them. And I will take the stony, unnaturally hardened heart out of their flesh, and I will give them a heart of flesh sensitive and responsive to the touch of their God. Oh, I love that scripture. Wow. I don't have to have a hard heart because of all the junk I went through in my life. I don't have to live ignorant, going around mistreating people and not even knowing that I'm doing it. I did that for so many years. I was so harsh and hard, and I would just run all over people and say hurtful things to people, and I didn't even know I was doing it. And people would say to me, why do you have to act like that? And I'd think, act like what? What is your problem? <laughs> I mean, have, have any of you ever been like that, like just that far out of it, you just like didn't get it? It's like, what is your problem? But now, man, I know it when I hurt somebody. I know it when I'm starting to say things that I shouldn't say. And if I don't get it right while I'm doing it, man, it's not done two or three minutes and I'm like, oh my God. I used to be rude and disrespectful to my husband, didn't have a problem with it at all. <laughs> now, man, I feel it. Ooh, I feel it if I do that. And I know that God doesn't want me doing that. And you know what? I'm willing to do whatever God wants me to do in order to protect the anointing that's on my life. You see, if we value this presence of God in our lives, this closeness of the Holy Spirit, this anointing that's on our life, we will do things that we don't want to do, that we don't think is fair, that we don't think is right, just because we trust God enough to know if that's what God says to do, then that's what we need to do. Okay, now, you say, well, gosh, I think you nailed me. I think I've got a hard heart. And you know, I'm not talking about, do you cry easily? That's, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, are you sensitive to the needs of people around you? When you see a need, can you just close your heart of compassion and just let somebody else do it? Or are we responding? Are we willing to sacrifice something we want or would like to have in order to help somebody else who's really in trouble. You say, well, okay, I just have to be honest, Joyce. I'm, I'm obviously maybe not where I need to be, not that any of us are, but so you say, well, okay, if I wanna turn around here and get going in the right direction, what can I do? Well, okay, the first thing Jesus says in Matthew 11, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am humble, gentle, meek, and lowly. I am not harsh, hard, sharp, and pressing. Oh, I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. He said, hang out with me, and you're going to learn what it's like to really get out in the world and have a meek, lowly, humble attitude and really care about people. I'm not harsh, hard, sharp, and pressing. Jesus could not just walk by a need and not stop to meet it. If you want to get a real education, don't just study the steps of Jesus, study the stops of Jesus. Because he was always traveling somewhere, he always had a goal, he was going somewhere to do something, but he always had time to stop for hurting people. Well, it's very wise to be sensitive to and obedient to the leading of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We don't want to displease God with our words, our actions, and He is in us as believers in Christ, wanting to lead us and guide us. For example, if you don't have peace about something, then just don't do it. That's one of the ways that God leads us is by peace. Another way is through His Word. There's many different ways that God leads us.
Un unfortunately, in a lot of our communities around here in South Africa, in this region in KwaZulu-Natal, um, the abuse, the sexual abuse, uh, the physical abuse of, as well, uh, is quite horrendous. Even in the area, we were, we were scared for the kids. It's heartbreaking when they're missing. I'm not going to let that happen. That's why I'm fighting for this area. Some of the children in this area mm -hmm. have disappeared? Yes, they did. What we never found them. Before we opened up this crutch, they are safe, healthy, good. So these early childhood development centers are not uh, little nice-to-haves or nursery places where they keep kids, you know, have fun and play games. They do all of those things, but this is actually investing in long-term benefit. This really is something that we can install into a community that opens up the door of the community for us to share the gospel and really stands as a witness, as a shining light into the community about the love of Christ. And we have such great opportunities through our Classrooms of Hope to help little guys like this who are going to make a big impact on the world one day. With your missions gift right now, you can provide safe classroom learning opportunities for young children. You and your special gift today will change lives.